Hello. Good evening. Happy Saturday. Hello, Andy. Might be all right. Not sure if you've been working today, but I uh, hope things have gone as well as they could have done if you were. And thank you. Um, hi, Rachel. So quick public service announcement, uh, clocks go back this evening, an extra hour in bed. Um, <coughs> which is the, way, the way 2020 is going, it's probably the best place to be. Uh, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna uh, share my screen. Wow. Hello, Claire. Hello, Leslie. Just waiting for uh, PowerPoint to stop messing about. Ooh. There we go. It's happy now. So, uh, oh, I knew I forgot to do something. Oh. Uh, so that's not the question for tonight. No, this is the question for tonight. What is the pattern of your prayer life? Uh, which assumes that you have a prayer life. Uh, others might want to come back and say, but all life is prayer, uh, which it kind of is. But I guess the question behind that is, is what do we understand to be prayer? Uh, who are we in conversation with, communication with, communing with uh, in prayer? What word might be used for that? Um, something bigger other than ourselves. Evening, Joyce, uh, God, the divine, whatever. Um, so, yeah, perhaps we can talk about that as well. Uh, but uh, and it might just be a, a, a kind of spiritual thing in, in, in a more holistic way. Uh, you know, those things that uh, put us in touch with, with, with our true selves, um, uh, things at the core of, of who we are. Um, that might be prayer and how do you have a pattern for that? Good evening, Catherine. Good evening, Ari. Stand by for poo emojis. I, I won't do anything else. Well, while Ari's typing poo emojis, uh, let's think about that question. Uh, which is not the one on screen it is what is the pattern of your prayer life whatever you understand prayer to be and we can talk about what you understand prayer to be as well
drums fell out the window at that point. I don't know why that happened. That's what happens when you try and write and record something in the space of least 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, before we gather, uh, I've been on a bit of a holy blood trip today. Uh, <coughs> holy blood are a Ukrainian um, band. What are they? Folk folk metal slightly black metal uh, death metal uh, male female vocalists flutes violins uh, guitars drums uh, yeah so all very um, based earthy based uh, but Ukrainian um, and uh, I guess their lyrics are coming from a sort of orthodox Christian perspective uh, I like them, so I've been listening to them today, and I thought, you know, it's been a while since <clears throat> I saw Holy Blood release anything. I wonder if I've missed some of their albums. Turns out I've missed two, uh, and an EP. Wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, roll on stipend day. Uh, obviously, after I put money in my spectacle fund, which will be after I put money in my tattoo fund and motorbike fund after last night's compliment. Yay. Um, but yeah, uh, so after an audit mission to do some ordering of their stuff. So having listened to some of their albums today, I want to share some of their lyrics this evening. So before we gather, here are some useful. No, no, after we gather. Ugh. Again, I've written it down, but uh, organized, but just failed to actually follow what I'd written down. Uh, so hold that thought about Holy Blood and their lyrics, which we will use in the Tusentak Thank You, Awesome Dude, Soul Elevation section after we have gathered. Stand by for Hugh. As moon rises, the sun slips sight begins the ritual of this night for those convinced their path Ribble. is right gathered from north south east and west yet called at another's behest those treading the path that is left from near and far come as you are to this place and embrace this space as darker hue Happy Saturday, Hugh. You. Of water, spirit, earth and fire, confessing the sins of empire, we come with our wounds and desire. Don't forget to put your clocks forward, Hugh. No, back, full back. Mm. Sensing that we are not alone, drawn to the flame that guides us home, for here, you, me and yet to be. Importance and signs of these times, for the sake of all those maligned, is yet the home of the divine. Tritone signaling, time to put a jacket on because I'm a bit cold. <laughs> Moo ha ha ha, something like Circle Pit Bounce. did a wibble down the microphone for Ari. Uh, a wibble is when you've got a burp coming, but you say wibble whilst burping, uh, which is completely irreverent. I do know, and I'm very sorry, but I thought Ari would love it. And then I realised that Ari's not watching as Ari is with grandma and granddad. Whoops. So I just did an irreverent wibble for no other purpose. I'm very sorry. Uh, it also means, because that first bit of music was not what I was expecting, so that means I've, I've hidden a piece of music somewhere in these slides, and I have no idea now where it is, because I told it to hide the playing icon. Uh, so this is going to be fun. Ooh. Uh, so now we come to the Tucson tack. Yes, we do. So yes, Tucson tack. 
Um, mm. As I said, Holy Blood, been checking them out uh, today. And uh, so I want to offer these lyrics for our Toos and Tack Thank You Awesome uh, Soul Elevation uh, segment uh, as we think about those things that have uh, been life-giving, have put us back in touch with the core of, our, of who we are today, or taken us outside of ourselves, uh, given us a glimpse of something bigger, um, whatever those things might be for you today as we look back on the day. These lyrics from the song The Wanderer from the band Ukrainian band Holy Blood. The wind sings as it touches his face. My soul searches you. Your house is far away from this land, but your kingdom is in the heart of my soul. You call me to the way where the sun rises, to the way where truth is a life for me. So we give our own Tooth and Tack uh, from today. for your soul I think this is not where the mystery music is let's find out no no it wasn't no. Um, but maybe there have been things as well as things that we are thankful for or things that made us go awesome uh, things that have not been good um, hmm in our own lives, the lives of those whom we love or care about, or colleagues, uh, or in the world. Um, so we, we recognise that now, and we lay them down so that we don't have to carry them into this night and into tomorrow. Uh, the principalities and will to power, the worms from within my own darkest hour, I confess all the regrets and the regrets, the burdens and the fears the lament and the tears for ourselves, those whom we love and care about, for all humanity and indeed all creation, we lay them down. And Jesus says to us, come to me, all you who are, who are weary. Who are weary? <laughs> come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. May that rest Deeply, deeply, deeply be yours this night. No, oh, the Metal Bible, metalbibleinternational.com. Uh, and tonight's reading is again from Hebrews and Ibrew, uh, chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. Uh, a call to persevere, which I misread because I still haven't found my glasses. It was a call to preserve, uh, and I found myself in a very sticky situation having misread it. That's a jam joke. Well, jokes, joke, joke, joke was laying it on a bit thick. <laughs> That's another jam joke. I put it on a bit thick. Mm. <clears throat> and so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciousness, consciences, 
our guilty consciousness, ah, <laughs> our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep God's promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Um, so, yeah, just just a bit of kind of background. Obviously, this is written to uh, a Jewish community who are followers of Jesus uh, after the, the, the the death of jesus and the resurrection of jesus um so this is a letter kind of putting and explaining jesus in the light of all of that uh you know jewish um history uh and religious practice and religious expectation um and so if you read the accounts of uh see a proper minister and biblical scholar would tell you precisely which gospel and which verse this is in uh but the account of uh the crucifixion of jesus and it talks about in the temple uh the moment when jesus gives up his spirit on the cross that the temple veil is torn in two uh that there was a veil uh where the high priest went to offer the sacrifices on behalf of the people because everybody else uh you know we're not worthy enough to, to enter into that most holy place the dwelling place of god um a place where the ark of the covenant uh was you know so it, this was literally the home of, of of god in terms of god's dwelling place a representation of on earth uh, and that at the death of jesus that veil gets torn in two in other words all people can enter into that most holy place that's that's where that's coming from at the beginning of that passage um but also just those messages for tonight. I know, uh, here it comes. I know all we can dot org dot UK, uh, on their daily one seventeen uh, gathering on Facebook, uh, is uh, hashtag hold together. Uh, and again, in that reading, we're encouraged to hold fast to, to, to hold on, um, even despite all that's going on. So these, uh, followers of Jesus were being persecuted. Um, again, we are living through this pandemic and that raises all sorts of understandable questions about what we believe uh, or don't believe or have believed and why and all those, all that sort of stuff. But that reading encourages us to hold fast uh, to the hope and the um, forgiveness and new life that we have in Jesus by that, uh, you know, through his work on the cross, that, that means that actually, you know, we are forgiven once and for all and that, that that veil between us and god is gone and we are directly children of god each and every one of us made in god's image um so there's encouragement to hold fast um and that encouragement to meet together um and at a time when uh i think many churches that were open certainly within our methodist district are being for sheffield are being encouraged to seriously prayerfully consider not opening um, in a pastoral letter the other day by a chair of district um you could say well there we go how can we you know we meet together the bible tells us to uh but hey i would say during this pandemic here we are here meeting together um so maybe things like like this gathering here uh, is a way that we can meet together and why should we meet together because we help each other hold fast um, and I'm going to quote Bon Jovi again, please God, strike me down, uh, <laughs> help each other to keep the faith even and to persevere through all of this um, in faith, uh, persevering faith, um, but also to to motivate each other. It's interesting, the New Revised Standard Version had the word provoke each other, <laughs> give me a poke and go get on with it, uh, but to encourage, to motivate each other, to love and to good deeds. Um, and again, through things like qu our questions from the Methodist way of life, that's at the heart of what those questions are about as we share together, helping us reflect uh, ourselves but in an accountable way with each other, um, that through our daily living and speaking, that we might uh, grow in love and, and sharing that love through how we live uh, with others in the world. Yeah. So... The wrong uh, question, so I'll put that off because it's not. I found the mystery music. 
Aha, uh-huh. I did leave the little sound icon in. Ah, how the heck did I? Why did I? How did I? Never mind. Um, but yeah, so uh, tonight's question that I forgot to put in the slides, sorry, is uh, what is the pattern of your prayer life? And again, maybe it comes into that, that reading about how we persevere in faith, whatever our faith is, um, however we understand that um, way of, of, of that, maybe persevering, maybe prayer. So I wonder what your pattern of prayer is. What do you understand prayer to be? Uh, and, and and how do you practice it? Um, is it a morning thing, an evening thing? I think we've said before that it could be a kind of ongoing conversation. Uh, sometimes it might be actually you think you're talking with yourself. But I think, again, if prayer is, is if we're made in the image of God, then prayer is is, is putting us back in touch with with god the divine the thing in our soul the core of our being um you might use different language to, to god whatever um but i still think we're all kind of in the same ballpark aren't we um <clears throat> yeah um so so what are those what what is your pattern for prayer feel free to uh, chip in hello rita I think, as I've said before, doing this has helped me have a pattern and a rhythm. Uh, but again, you know, during the day, noticing things, just I think prayer is sometimes our response to things, whether it's um, joy, whether it's sorrow, uh, whether it's, you know, pain and hurt and empathy with a particular situation that's just seems wrong or unjust or just tragic. Um, <clears throat> prayer is also perhaps when we respond to some of, some of those situations, if maybe you've, if you've given uh, to support the NHS or to support uh, things like the All We Can Coronavirus Emergency Appeal, um, supporting people in different countries as well, maybe that giving is part of prayer, uh, that it's saying, you know, please God, I'm giving this because I believe and I passionately want things to be different and better uh, for people, uh, recognising that we share our common humanity all made in the image of God. So what is your pattern of prayer? Maybe it's being quiet. Maybe it's looking out of the window of an evening and looking at the bit of creation that you can see. That's good. Yeah. Deep calling to deep. So maybe I'll just leave that question with us to think about over the uh, next few days. Uh, you know, when do you catch yourself doing something that feels like you, to you, like prayer? Uh, I don't know. It's, and again, I, I, just to be clear, right? This is not about right answers. Yeah, this is about us sharing our experience and, and what is helpful for us, and maybe by sharing that. Uh, somebody else hears something that's helpful to them um, <clears throat> uh, maybe we get new ideas or affirmed or encouraged or whatever um, all of those thank you Catherine that's helpful yeah so maybe just have a think
Well, that's cool. Thank you for your responses. Uh, uh, it's just interesting, Joyce. It's really cool to know, because I know somebody else who's in here, actually, who prays for the situation when they hear or see an ambulance. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, wow, but you live near a hospital, so it happens a lot. There you go. A very active pattern of prayer life. Fantastic. Uh, and that praying in the morning for the day ahead and in the evening, yeah, um, reflecting on it and praying for others too as you've encountered situations in the day. And yeah, actually having not having a particular pattern, but just responding uh, I guess having that conversation, it may feel like we're having it with ourselves, but I think even if it, it feels like we are, I think actually we are communing. <clears throat> with the ground of our being with the divine with god even though we might not use those words uh there we go Catherine has claimed it to be an ambulance spotting prayer responder fantastic and as we have people uh, also in who are sometimes driving those ambulances uh that's that's really good to know that uh, you know we're connecting in that way and praying for those driving it those who are i guess patients but also other people in here who then uh kind of seek to minister to and administer care uh, and healing and, and wholeness to uh, patients when they arrive uh, so there we go we're all kind of part of a of a, of a circle of, of responding to the world and holding each other in that way that's fantastic thank you uh, so other things that we particularly want to pray for tonight I want to pray for one of my colleagues. Uh, and I'm not going to say any more than that, but just all that's going on with them. Pray for, yeah, all the churches in the Sheffield Methodist district as we respond to our district chair's pastoral letter and just those those thinking and the praying the thinking and the praying about how best we might care for each other and serve the community uh potentially by you know reducing the amount that people are moving around by not opening buildings for worship even though we can um given that yeah all this all the district of methodist churches here are all in tier three areas uh, apart from two bits uh and then you know is it an act of solidarity uh you know is it a way of saying actually we're not going to ask people to travel or think about traveling from a higher area to low area just to go to church because you know the government advises you shouldn't doesn't doesn't tell you you can't but again those sorts of things so what what is uh, the best way again we've we've thought i think a couple of weeks ago about you know giving to caesar what is caesar's giving to god what is god's um you know these are requirements and advice from government uh, but actually is there a way of giving to God what is God's, even if there's a cross for us to bear in that, uh, because it is a way of, of, of caring. I'm not advocating either way. It's local church decisions, uh, but this is part of the uh, conversation going on. And so I pray for those of my colleagues involved in those conversations. And yeah, absolutely, Joyce, continue to pray uh, ahead of Jean's uh, funeral on Monday. Yeah. Pray for Paul and for Joan. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Leslie. I know this doesn't affect all of us, but pray praying for families uh, during this half term, especially there's not as much things that people are able to go and do but also if people are in whatever version of the job support scheme we're in or have been made redundant um all those things uh, that make it even harder um you know maybe even in the case of struggling to put food on the table um so giving thanks for those who try and meet that need through food banks as well um but uh yeah just just this this week um of potentially yeah lovely quality time as families please god but also maybe extra pressure of 
it's time together, especially time together, predominantly indoors, depending on what tea you're in, and the impact that can have, especially, um, yeah, anybody who is in uh, you know, potentially an abusive relationship, um, and as we saw during the initial restrictions, um, the impact uh, that may have in exacerbating that situation. So. I don't quite know what to pray for, but I just acknowledge that that is reality for people. And I just pray that God would work in those situations. And I give thanks for all of those wanting to offer help, um, whether it's cafes in Sheffield, I understand are offering uh, free cafe meals to uh, kids who get free school meals. Uh, amazing. Uh, right through to, uh, you know, those who respond um in terms of domestic violence charities, I know particularly the, the Salvation Army are uh, spearheading that piece of work in terms of government response. Uh, but again, you know, people, uh, police, um, NHS, um, particularly those responding as first responders, uh, those things lead to 999 calls. Mm. So let's offer these prayers. All of them, the ones you've shared, the ones you have thought and felt, the ones you just feel you can't name as well. To the one in whom all people and all creation have their being, may your kingdom come. Your will be done as above, so below. Sustain us for this day. Show us grace as we seek to show grace to those we feel have wronged us. Save us from the worst that is within us and within this world. For <laughs> the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever and ever and ever. Amen. Ah, oh, it's a shame. I missed out some uh, Holy Blood lyrics when we did the uh, laying down bit. Never mind. Uh, no, I'm not going to go back to them. Uh, so uh, here are some more Holy Blood lyrics uh, from the song Jerusalem. Uh, and again, just offering this as we are reading from Hebrews tonight, persevere. Uh, we persevere in faith. We persevere doing the best we can do to care for each other on a day-to-day -day basis as well as in whatever work situation we're in uh community situation church situation all those things and yeah it can feel like a slog and it can feel uh overwhelming and daunting while we're not getting anywhere and so holding on to that idea that that uh, in jesus that temple veil is torn in two and got rid of so that all can enter into the most holy place um uh, and those lyrics from Holy Blood at the beginning about God's kingdom being in our hearts. Um, yeah, let's keep on keeping on uh, because little by little that is becoming more and more real. Um, and one day, the day will come. Heaven will shine. All the land will be light then. And the holy town of Jerusalem will come down from heaven in God's glory. God's dwelling place will be on this earth with us wow okay so and the lyrics carry on sorry that was my added bit sorry <laughs> open the gates to all open your eyes listen the land holy day not so far away and until then may the peace of the all parents be ours this night and in that time that we've just heard about that is and will fully be with all people and all creation amen uh yeah so um just a couple of uh other things just before we um we we, we, we finish uh first of all it, ooh, interesting i was uh so I've, i'll put some holy blood stuff in the um metal complain the play music playlist uh, on YouTube. I've already done that, but I'll share the link back to it uh, in here in the comments afterwards. 
Uh, but also I spotted there's a new Demon Hunter single out. Oh, so if you are on YouTube, uh, I might just drop that in as well, actually. Yeah, I'll drop that in. I'll send it to you. So yeah, just check back here and I'm hoping in about half an hour there'll be an updated playlist with the Holy Blood lyrics and music, uh, but also uh, I'll point it in the direction of that new Demon Hunter song Ooh, and video. Very excited to hear what that is. Um, I don't know if it's brand new. I don't know if it's from uh, their last kind of almost double album war and peace i don't know i need to go and check it out but we can check it out together um also tomorrow morning if you're around at 10 30 a.m then uh on my facebook page not here my facebook page uh so facebook.com rev james morley um we will have a live stream of a zoom service so an act of worship done by zoom you're very welcome uh to join that because to, to hear your comments and to see you in that if you want to actually join on camera in zoom then message me or email rev james morley uh so message me via facebook messenger uh either via metal methodist or my own facebook page facebook.com rev james morley uh, or email me rev james morley at outlook.com and i'll hook you up hook you up dude with the uh zoom link for that if you want to be part of it uh no no i'm i'm really glad you like demon hunter joyce me too i think they are yeah yeah in terms of the, one of the bands that i go back to certainly from a spiritual uplifting encouraging discipleship point of view yeah yeah definitely that's where i go um so it's good to know that sharing it has made one of the fam maybe one day we should go to nashville together and see them live who knows um but uh yeah, so that's Sunday. Um, and Monday, as I said, we have a actual bona fide rock legend, uh, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist uh, with many albums under his belt with his band. Uh, and one of those songs actually fits with tonight, and I'll give you a clue. Gotta be strong in the way we are and keep the fire burning. <laughs> uh, that probably didn't help at all, that racket, did it? But never mind. Um, so, uh, Mr. Graham Leslie of the band Stairway uh, is going to join us at seven o'clock here at Metal Methodist uh, for Metal Compline. A uh, chance to hear about the band Stairway. I think they're definitely they're already in the Metal Compline, the music playlist, one of their songs. In fact, that song, Keep the Fires Burning. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, check them out. But please do join us on Monday for, uh, yeah, to hear, about, to hear about Graham, to hear about the band, but also to hear what actually it's been like in, in that line of work and that ministry. Uh, during um, the pandemic and the impact of that upon it and how we might support him. Hello, Mother. Um, anywho, uh, so tonight we have thought about patterns of prayer. One might say, let us pray. But indeed, we have prayed. And so now I can say, let us sway. AM 10:30 AM at facebook.com Rev James Morley is our live worship. Come and join healing now. <laughs> There we go. Toodaloo. Take care. Um, I want to categorically state, despite what my middle daughter thinks, right? I do not have hair like Lord Farquaad from Shrek, all right? I'm just saying. Go well, lovely people. See you soon. Well, see you tomorrow, morning and evening. Take care. Bye.